Most of us feel like we have potential, but we don't know how to tap into it. Inside, we feel like we should be doing something different, but we don't know what that is. Well, now it's time to awaken your energy and enlightenment. Find out who you really are and truly discover why you are more powerful than you think. By transforming the perspective of yourself, you will discover the power to recognize the incredible possibilities within you and in your life. Now, bringing you thought leaders from around the country and around the world, here's chiropractor and author, Dr. Fred DiDomenico. Hey, it's Dr. Fred with You Are More Powerful podcast. And the reason we do this, this is based on my book, You Are More Powerful Than You Think, that introduces a spiritually and emotionally based life coaching system, six-step system to connecting with your divinity, clearing of your past, discovering, living, and fulfilling your soul purpose, and that's called Healed. And the reason we do this podcast, and I want to bring to you leaders around the world that are not only impacting the lives of others, but, but really the main thing is they've become conscious of their divinity, that divine reference point. They're going through the process or have been through the process, not only clearing their past, but that's a continual process in our humanity, right? And then really finding and living their sole purpose that is doing our highest calling, and that's contributing, not only contributing to humanity, but helping them connect with that identity inside them, right, of who we truly are and connecting with that power. So uh, today we have Dr. Chris Zeno. Um, you know, I mean, you're just affecting the lives and empowering the lives of so many people, not only a great leader, but most importantly, a great friend. So I'm honored to have you on this today. Just thanks so much, Dr. Fred, and everybody who's watching and listening. We'll have a lot of, I know it'll be great. It always is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, this whole hero project you're doing is so connected and really parallel and aligned. We, we've had some years of conversations about this, right? Yeah. About finding that hero that's in, that's in every person. But you also had to go through your own journey. So for, you know, you're so well known to a lot of this audience, but so many people may not know about you. So we really want to get to kind of know the man behind the mission. So why don't you tell a bit of your journey and how we, how you came into this? And, you know, I think what I'll do with you, Dr. Fred is um, I'll probably share you, I would say like the recent um, truth and journey of why that hero thing was going on there. Cause I kind of came to a realization of, of things, but I mean, up until that point, you know, uh, built one of the largest wellness clinics in the world. And I did it from an experience. You know, I had, a, I had a blessing in my life, which was I was diagnosed with an incurable disease that no one could help. They wanted to ruin my colon, right? So imagine, but let's before that in 1998, I went Mr. America. You know, I, I was in cover of magazines. You know, I was a, uh, had my degree in exercise physiology. I trained Xena Warrior Princess, that cast, and Hercules, that cast, and Orlando. Like, awesome, you know, great. Look good, felt good, that's it. And then when I got struck with this disease, Dr. Fred, it challenged my uh, belief system, it challenged my paradigm because I thought health was how I looked or how I felt. I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't do drugs, yet people are lining up at McDonald's and Sonic every morning and smoking and they're doing great and I have this, this disease. So I was on the wrong map of what I thought health was and I thought I had cancer, all this other stuff. So I went from 230, 230 pounds to about 158, and nothing's working. And then uh, after my mom sends out the prayer email, because, you know, I had a mother, I'd lost two sons at this point. Hey, lost back dad. up at one. You yeah. know, you say things so fast. Yeah, sorry. It doesn't land on people, you know, because this is your story. First of all, 230 to 158. Yeah. That's a person that's dying. Yeah, no, no, it was. I was, I was, uh, I disassociated in the beginning. And I think a lot of us do that where we're facing something and it's so insurmountable that we just look the other way, but you can't do that. Instead, I looked the other way versus going through it, which I actually had to go through that versus disassociate and go away from it. So yeah, Dr. Fred, it was just my entire identity, keyword identity here was, uh, was ripped from me because what was my identity up until that point? At 12 years old, I started to work out. I've been working out for 30 years straight. I was inspired by my dad because he had a great 
built. I had He-Man, G.I. Joe figures. I just always wanted to look like a hero. And that, that was always there in me. And uh, to have, I was known for that in high school. Just think, now I'm a teenager. I'm starting to work out. I'm responding. Girls are looking. Guys are appreciating. Peers are. So like this became the thing I hung everything on, Dr. Fred. Like this was my identity. It was all about, right? And then uh, uh, it was like literally and, and like ripped from me. It was like, it's like you took, took me okay. down to a skeleton. You know, all that work rifts, you know, so. Well, and then this is how, you know, we're raised competition, comparison, separation, you know, and then, and then the thing is we learn love, like in Healed, Exercise, Loving Yourself and Others, right? We learn love by what we do and who we are and the accolades of other people. And so it creates such an outside in fragile, in a sense, fear-based paradigm. And even though you're getting confidence and acknowledgement from it, you know, there's still that big void and that's, and that's the world we live in. Right. And it's such a fragile existence yet universal laws are true. You're always going to come back to center. So with that fragile existence, it's like you needed something completely life changing and traumatic, almost death, right. To be able to rip that from you so you can see who you really are. Absolutely. And you know, um, in my story, you know, when, when I, what I've said for the last 15 years is, you know, I was introduced to a chiropractor and I thought it was the ri- most ridiculous thing I ever heard. But one of my anatomy teachers, like, you got to go see this guy, he'll look at your nervous system, he'll take care of it. And he did it very nonchalant. Like, yeah, you know, do this. Do that. I went to Baylor Medical. I had 200 grand in debt, billion dollar facility, top four doctors in the world, did all the, the drugs. And like, if that didn't work and this guy's telling me, go see this guy in Sarasota, Florida who has an office out of his house, you know? So it was just like, <laughs> like, thanks, but no thanks. But here's the key, Dr. Fred. Like, I didn't realize how I became hopeless and a victim because I said, thanks so much, but I tried everything. And he looks at me and goes, well, you didn't try everything because if you tried everything, you would have had your health. And I didn't realize until he said that in that moment because we don't, Dr. Fred, I didn't realize my blind spot. I have my minutes. So I'm like, holy smoke. Like, oh my God, he's right. Like, if I tried everything, I would have my health. So it just opened up a little bit of the crack, the door a little bit to say, well, okay, I'll go, I'll go see this, this guy. And, uh, and, you know, hearing, you know, hearing the message of a chiropractic and the nervous system and what it really does uh, that, and I saw blind spots that I didn't know before, and it really started me on the path to change my life. And, uh, but well, let me add this, and this is what most people don't know. And this will, might be the first time you heard this, Dr. Fred too, even though we know each other. The truth is, the chiropractic absolutely did help change my life and my body was getting better. You know, it took me over seven months. But at the seventh month, the blood, there was, the blood totally stopped. So ulcerative colitis, if you guys are listening, imagine bleeding 16 times a day, losing blood, mucus. It's, you can't hold any food down. You know, it was getting better. So I was addressing a cause of a problem. But what I want to bring about, because this has to do with what your mission and vision and what your gift that you're giving to the world is about. And it's, and so let me say what it is. And this is actually, uh, and Dr. Fred, due to chiropractic, can I be transparent? Like my story had to be said in 20 minutes. So it, it was, it was positioned in a way where it has a nice beginning, middle and end, but it was a little bit more complex than that. And it had a little bit more things that actually played a part in it. About seven months in, you know, or about six months in, I'm still bleeding, but I'm better. I'm avoiding surgery, so I have momentum. I'll take this. I'll take a little bit of drug. I'll take, you know, avoiding surgery. I'll take a little bit of blood. I'll take, you know, my weight stabilizing. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. I'm so grateful because I was so humbled. And I was actually humble enough where I started, you know, uh, the reason why I went to Houston, I started listening to Joel Osteen a lot because I just needed a message of, like, love and appreciate, you know, like, just... Because I was humbled out, I was broken, and um, you know, like my mortality and my higher being and God really got real at that moment of my life. Because it's like I had nothing to hang on to, and I will tell you uh, a moment. I was actually, you know, in church, and this is not a religious thing I'm talking about, but I was in church, and I was there was it was during a praise and worship thing. So basically, I was worshiping and acknowledging and appreciating my creator you know so you could whoever when you're listening you could call it whoever you want Allah 
the great spirit, whatever it is. So I was, I was focusing on like arms open, humble doubt, heart open. I am done. Like I got nothing fucking left. <laughs> and dude, I remember the night in that moment I was standing, Dr. Fred, I felt a heat or a touch of love so unconditional. It brought me to my seat. I couldn't stand. And I knew I had a knowing in that moment, I'm healed. I'm healed. Like I knew in that moment I had spontaneous healing. It just like, there was a knowing. It was like, Oh, like not a belief. Like I hope to be healed or I have faith to be healed. I'm like, Holy shit. I'm healed. That's I'm, I'm over. And I was, I was like, it happened. It like, thank you. Like you say my life. Like, and that next weekend I had a colonoscopy and they, and they, they did it. They're like, yeah, we don't see any, we don't see any info. This, like, it, this was not a colon of a person who's been battling colitis for a year. Like it looks perfect. It looks great. And that was just confirmation of my healing, but I knew it. So no one ever knew that story because it, it's not uh, it doesn't make the whole chiropractic story as romantic as I might've said it to be. But um, it was a combination of really being humbled out and in love and, um, to, and, and receiving love when I had because I couldn't force it. I couldn't effort myself to health at that point anymore. And when we get, I was so efforting, Dr. Fred, like, what can I eat better? What can I do better? But the efforting was not doing it for me because of, of uh, how to deal with some maybe uh, issues with myself to receive love, to really appreciate the love of that. And that, there was, that was the day, if I had to tell you, Fred, what was the day that I was totally healed? It was in that moment, man. And it, it totally aligns with what you're saying. I know you never heard this from me, but that was... That was the day was healed. And Whitney, my, my ex, she would she will tell you the same thing. She will say, we were at Gateway Church, and Chris was brought to his knees, and he looked at me, and he said, I don't have colitis anymore. And I didn't. And colitis became an experience in my life. It never became a disease. It was never my disease. It was an experience. So you couldn't do it with willpower. You had to do it. You know, and this is the whole premise of healed, and you're, you're explaining it. It's being before doing, right? Like you were the king supreme of doing right <laughs> turns i mean if anybody knows you you have so much will when you make up your mind it is going to happen and and uh being before doing a lot of times is surrendering our will and that was that experience <laughs> like like brought to your knees metaphorically to say i'm open yeah but i'm not a very woo-woo guy so everybody's listening like i'm a very practical logical Dude, and hopefully you guys could like get that from me. I'm not like this weird, weird person talking to you. So when I have an experience like that, take it from my perspective. I was a very, you know, by the numbers, by the books, I could measure everything. I did. I measured everything and I efforted my way, uh, you know, through everything. And uh, it was really the moment where I had to surrender, receive love and, um, and know that, I, you know, I, I cried out for it and it, and it happened. Well, and I mean, you've told this story in chiropractic for decades, right? Yeah. And uh, really, this story is a thousand times. You can't even measure yeah. how much more powerful this story is. Because it's the truth, Dr. Fred. How can I, hey, can I be honest? How can I sell that story? You know, like, I mean, I could sell, hey, I got chiropractic care and I'm a chiropractor and hey, hey, listen, you know, it'll help you. And someone's like, if it works for him, it'll work for me. And it did to a point. But how do I say, you know, once you could unconditionally receive love from your creator and accept it and, and, and humble and submit yourself to the experience, um, you know, I don't know how to, I don't know how to charge for that. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I just, because it's, you know, why, Dr. Fred, because it's free. It's, it's, yeah. it, it's always been, it, I, I didn't, I didn't find something, everybody. I allowed, I allowed what was always there. So, you know, when Joe Vitality has, you ever, you ever hear his thing like the hope of hope and no, or whatever, like, you know, uh, um, I love you. Please forgive you know, I'm love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. It's just like you're saying you're, you're basically asking forgiveness that I'm so sorry. I, I forgot. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. forgot my, yeah. I forgot my divinity. Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so how do you sell divinity that everybody has forgotten they truly have? You don't. Well, isn't that funny? Because that's why Jesus Christ got crucified. Right. Because right? what did he say when he was teaching is free? Man, then you don't have to go to the temple or whatever, right? right? It's free. You can do it on your own. Now that takes away 
everything in religious rule. Right. Which is fascinating. So, man, so now that you got that and then you, um, you obviously now you're practicing chiropractor because that certainly changed your life. And, uh, but when you started chiropractic, even though you were healed, I mean, you still struggled. You still had some mental, emotional issues that you had to get over. And, and then you heard a, heard a principal, boom, your whole life expansion. And I'll tell a little bit about that. Is this the why principle? Like, you know, is that we were talking about how you teach about the why or the principle? Oh, seven now? steps of why. Yeah. Like, is that, is that what you're referring to or, or just tell well, I mean, even moment. though in spite you had this life chain yeah, yeah. went into practice, right? right. And you, right. you struggled in the beginning and then there was all right, another right. epiphany. Cause you know, like that's the thing in my life. I have all these moments, Dr. Fred, that I didn't go like, I didn't gradually go up. I have these moments where it's like, it resets the thermostat immediately. Like this, this, Boom. You know, it's just the explosion. So that moment was, yeah, struggling in practice because I was, you know, I went to school. I was trying to do all those things there and doing it very uh, intellectually, so to speak. You know, if I would speak, it would be very rotary or oratory type of reading, like giving a lot of good information. And I was at this uh, at this concert in the Woodlands here, and I saw all ten like ten thousand people, and they're all getting ready for this concert, and they were all really happy and excited. And I was looking at them, and I had this thing. I'm like, I know something about health. I know a principle of life and health that pretty much none of these people know because none of them are my patients. And I'm like, and and I felt the burden that I knew something they didn't know. And so even though they were happy and they were enjoying their time, like they were going towards heart disease, they were going towards cancer, they were going, they were living the same life I was living, thinking health was how they just looked or felt, not knowing that the top three killers you don't feel um, until it's too late. And I got, again, you know, super emotional, tear of inspiration. And I said, okay, listen, I need to get this message out. So I started doing talks, you know, I started getting out. And when I did talks, Dr. Fred, I used to have like this book, right? And this book, this binder, and in the binder had all my notes. So I literally read my talk. So it was very behind a podium. And one day I forgot my notes. I forgot my PowerPoint, you know, all the technology. And I'm like, what am I going to do? And it was in this Rotary Club. And in the woodlands, big oil here. So you got all these oil people and neurologists. And I was like, I'm trying to like compare, right? How am I going to impress them? How do I impress? Like, you know, this is like, you know, there's billionaires in there. So I'm freaking out. And uh, I'm like, I'm going to leave. I'm going to flake. <laughs> and so I said, you know what? I go, I'm going to go in there. And I go, the one thing that no one could beat me on is my story. And this is for everybody. Like your story is your story, whoever's listening no matter what you went through. And no one could call bullshit on your story, meaning that like no one could do me better than me. No one could tell my life better than me. So what I'm going to do there, I don't have my, my talk. I'm just going to go there and tell my story and tell me. Because as long as I t talk, you know, tell my story, you know, I'm in my lane. It is my truth. And then, man, I got to stand in ovation. And like people, people wanted to come into the office. <laughs> so I just started saying, hey, listen, all I need is a – a poster and a spine to explain uh, what chiropractic is and then tell my story. And we grew 2,000 visits a week in 19 months. And wow. for someone that's listening, an average office sees 100 patient visits a week. And I, at the end of that, I saw 2,600 patient visits a week um, at the end of 19 months. So like 26x the average of offices. And so when you have a 26x growth and it was, the, and it was a, it was a moment where I'm like, you know, I, I just had to be me, and that's why, like, when I started this interview with you, it's like I'm, I'm even, we're always, when you think you're you, and say I'm going to remove this layer and be transparent and really tell my truth, there's always another layer and another layer, and you just get there. So that's why today this is another layer. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to tell people the real story of how I got well, um, the total story, because then it allows me to be me. Totally. And I'm always searching to be me. And like, like uh, Dr. Fred said, me is a hundred percent perfect divinity. That's the truth. And I'm, and I think our whole human life, we're looking to freaking get, not get there, but allow ourselves to get there. And I think that's what healed and um, you know, your book and your, and your course is really helping with. Well, and you know, uh, you have Joseph Campbell, right? Tells the heroes, the hero's journey. And that's really what it is, it is our story. And one of the things that we talk about, not only do you talk about that we'll get into what you're doing, 
but and you're more powerful than you think when you're a spirit on a human journey we do go through these challenges and really our only our really only responsibility in life is to move from our humanity into our divinity to actually become conscious of our divinity which your whole story and consciousness and the things journey you've been through is, is this is what not only you've discovered but but it's so powerful in your message and so that's like a hologram you know because we are spirit incarnated we go back and forth and and what it is is really having the conscious ability which not only is a level of consciousness but it's also a skill right you have to you develop this you nailed it, Dr. Fred. Like everybody thinks it's some subconscious, unconscious thing. No, it's conscious. Meaning that, like, each day, I, I read something really good yesterday. How about this, Dr. Fred? Each day, um, our, our power is only in the present moment. In fact, our past is still a hologram because our past, we base it off what we choose to remember. Like, I, in my present, if I have a belief system saying that we're, t so Dr. Fred and I are Italian. So if I have a belief system that all Italians, only like red sauce, right? I could look back in my past and only remember the times I saw Italians enjoying red sauce. But, but the conscious awareness is, are there Italians that like white sauce? Yes. They like olive, uh, you know, oil and garlic. Yes. So, so the thing is, we look, our past is such a illusion of our belief systems. It's not really the truth. So if the power is in the present, the power we could do at any given time is ask ourselves, which you and what world, meaning that which you is showing up today? Is it the you that's scared with belief systems or because if I could create from my present moment, am I the more powerful you know, person? Am I enthusiastic, loving, appreciative? And then which world do I choose to create today? Because you're creating today. Am I going to create the world of the past, the same old bullshit? Or am I going to create the world where, you know, People do, you know, want to help me. You know, people do like like what I do. You know, people do appreciate me, or I I am good at what I do, right? So it it takes a conscious, every single day, never ending. Uh, it's like prayer. It's like I would consider what they would what uh, they would say like you're praying. Uh, you're, you're praying all the time. It's like you always consciously have to be kind of tweaking that um, to break the paradigm. Well, Psalm 1, meditate day and night, right? So that, that becomes, again, that's a habit. Yeah. It's a skill you develop. Otherwise, our physiology, the world around us will influence us, right? So what you're saying is you, you make conscious choice. Right. It's really a choice that you make, and we have an opportunity every second to make that. And it's tough for someone to feel, well, no, how dare you say this? I didn't choose this sickness. I didn't choose... Listen, when you take personal responsibility and know that <laughs> nice you have, and it's, but let me tell you, there's so much power in that. When I realized that, you know what, I, I, I created this for whatever reason. And you know, it's, it, and there could be blind spot, but once I took personal responsibility, then I knew only then humbly that I took personal responsibility. Then I knew that I could then. I could overcome it it's because it's so easy to say, well, I was given the wrong genetics. I was born in the wrong family. I, I was given the wrong circumstances. Or you don't know what I have gone through. The thing is like, as long as you become a victim and still point at all those things, then you'll always stay there. You're reinforcing that. But once you're like, you know what? Yeah, this is the circumstances that I speak, but I still have control over that. And I and inherently, knowingly or unknowingly created this, yes, in your life. Um, you could get well. And the reason why I could tell you you created it because I created an incurable disease at one point in my life. I had this experience. And it's been almost 17 years. And since that day, God, I'm telling you, nothing. Like, perfect. But like, like, I don't, so I, I'm not in remission. It's just, it was never mine. Like, the cells of my body, whatever, the cells had memory in my body of this disease. And those cell, that cell memory was, was obliterated. It was brand new. And so the cells of my body created and continue to create health and that was that all starts with a conscious decision and i know you're like uh it's not woo woo it, it is but it takes it takes the understanding and conscious um application for sure so acceptance would really be the first step is what you're saying acceptance and then responsibility like you said okay i have this disease you accepted it and then responsibility that you created it and actually 
what that did and what you're saying as I'm kind of going through the steps is then you made room for God. Right. Cause I needed help. I couldn't, I couldn't effort this anymore. Cause my way, my, uh, <laughs> my curriculum of my life got me here. So I kind of need a little guidance out of this. Yeah. So your consciousness is actually what created the barrier when they're there all the time. But when you said, okay, acceptance, responsibility, I did it. Now I'm open. Now my heart is open. Now just show me the way. Boom. Cause, cause God's always there, right? Our divinity is inside us. We're connected all the time, but until we're willing to accept number one, acceptance is the path to peace. And when you're in that peaceful state and then you have responsibility, man, now miracles, miracles happen. And I, I always say miracles, we only classify them as miracles when we don't expect them. Correct. But are they really miracles? No, it's a natural law of life. It's, it's, you know, that's what it was. When you realize that miracles are just nothing but natural laws doing what you were created to do. Again, saying something's a miracle, it's like, oh, well, you know, it was like, it's still pointing the finger that it's like this freak thing, you know, it might not, it's like, you know, it's, it's disconnecting you from truth. But exactly. if you just realize that it's a normal, no, no, that's exactly, that's, that's, uh, that was actually normal. Exactly. So now then you're, I mean, you were years in practice, you know, I mean, you serve thousands and tens of thousands, yeah. you know, hundreds of, of thousands of 19,000 people are in my Genesis computer. And that was, and I, I got that three or four years after I started. So, so that was, that's just 19 of what we know. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. So then now you had a whole new, I mean, I remember, you know, we, we are obviously friends and you hit that fork in the road where you're like, I've completed this mission yeah. and I feel something bigger inside me, but you were thinking, yeah, I need to do this, but I wasn't sure. And then boom, that again, once again, that landed on you and now you're in a whole different direction. So absolutely. Yeah. Talk about that. So, you know, I checked off all the boxes. So I'm like, so now I did what I could. Now I did what I thought success was. Like imagine when you were younger, like you're, you, I pictured in my mind or I created a belief system in my mind that these parameters equaled success. And that could be from teachers and preachers and dogmas and movies and media. But I hit it all, guys. So I had this very successful practice. Check. Um, married with kids. Check. Kids were healthy. Check. Uh, financially secure and confident. Check. Lamborghini in the garage. Check. Paid for house. No debt. Check. Boom in business. You know, check, 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 check. So I checked up all the boxes, but yet you're right. I was still, uh, I get to the point where I'm like, why am I depressed? So now I'm going, what the hell's going on now? Like, why am I feeling this way? And I wasn't ungrateful. I don't want to share this with anybody because it's tough to have that conversation in that position going, you know what, guys? I'm a little down. I don't know why. And people are like, <laughs> you? you know, so it was very like, I didn't want to be that guy. So I, um, I was getting disengaged uh, with my patients, just didn't want to be there, felt heavy and numb, and then disengaged at home. You know, I would actually just work or numb myself out on YouTube or something just to always keep on my mind occupied because then I didn't have to face this feeling of like, why do I feel kind of depressed and down? And then one day, you know, I was just questioning my purpose. And, you know, my purpose, yes, to help people, yes, to see them lead better lives, yes. But it was kind of like a success 101 answer. It sounded good. And, but then when I, I said, listen, I really had to get down, like, what is, why do I do what I do? And I kept on going until I hit the selfish answer. And the selfish answer and my truth was I just want to be admired for doing something in this world that's never been done or seen before. You know, and being appreciated for that. That's what I want to do. That's why I busted my ass. That's why I, I hit a number of my profession that no one else ever did in the history because I wanted to be appreciated. I, I, wanted, I wanted to be admired and idolized for that. And I wanted to be known for courage and contribution and, and creativity. And so it felt so good. I was like, yeah, I lo like you feel some, an energy change. You felt something change. So I started looking up some of those words, right? Because like, what are these words coming to me? Contribution, achievement, you know, um, admired, appreciated. And I just put those words in with commas under in Google. And uh, the definition of hero popped up. It was like on the second page, but hero, I see hero and my, my mind went to it. And when I looked at the definition of the hero, it's one who is admired or idealized for courage, contribution, outrageous achievement, and nobility. And I looked at that and Dr. Fred was like, that's my purpose statement. Like that is me. And then I was like, 
taken right back because I don't remember much of my childhood. We talked about that. I didn't have a traumatic childhood as I think I, I, I don't remember if I did. But like I was able to go back and be like, hey, you know what? When I was a little kid, I always wore superhero pajamas and underwears. You know, I had my dad worked out like I, I, I wanted to be a superhero when I was a kid. You know, I worked out to look like a superhero. I beat a life threatening illness, uh, terminal illness to I beat that thing to later on have a huge practice to save hundreds of thousands of lives. So like, you know, I, I had these achievements because that was part of the thing, right? I had the achievement of the definition. I had the contribution, but I realized that in that definition was something called courage. I didn't have the courage to allow myself to fully step into or evolve or allow myself to be who I was created to be because I had the fear that if I was to step out of that identity, which I then created of the doctor, it meant that I would lose that identity if I stepped out and lose and lose that look, lose the, the money, lose the house, lose the this. So I was afraid that if I don't step, if I step out, I'll lose all this. And not knowing I went on the journey to um, not losing it, but choosing uh, to get away from that, you know, that where I was and to what I'm doing now, you know, so that was, uh, that was my journey at that point in my life, <laughs> which was about two years ago. Yeah. And then you, um, you created this whole movement now and tribe and, um, culture and it's growing and expanding. And so tell a little bit about the heroes. So you identified with that, but really it was a secret identity. Right. Tell about the principles. I had a secret identity, you know, so the secret, I, I, I was living my secret identity. It's a less than watered down version of my truth that, that blinds me of the vision and robs me of the, it blinds, it blinds me of the true sight and it robs me of the true vision and mission of what I was always created and born and destined to do. And, you know, I said, listen, I'm not going to live in the secret identity anymore. You know, I'm going to rip that off. And I took, you know, the hero message to the world through speaking, through writing, through videos, through Facebook lives. I would just get on Facebook live for 186 days in a row to just, when I was getting these downloads to, to just get them out to the people and getting the feedback from the people. And, you know, I came up with a four, a four part methodology called hero rising. And uh, just in a little bit of time, the people that we've been helped, you know, people have found the courage to pursue careers according to their purpose. Very important. A lot of people are in careers that they're miserable at because they're not doing what they love to do. They found the courage to restore and heal their families, uh, or they found the courage to, um, you know, move forward, right, of those relationships. And then the courage, though, here's the thing, the courage gave a new sense of excitement, hope, joy, enthusiasm, um, purpose, you know, like it just the juice of life was able to come back to these people because they allowed themselves to be the hero and the person they were created to be. And, uh, it's just been an amazing journey. It's, and, and, you know, I, I have things in my life where I went back into the practice, but even though I went back to my practice, I was going back to, uh, it, it was never the same even now, Dr. but it's not the same. It's great. It's awesome, but it's not the same because a part of me, the cloud moved, the part of me evolved out of it. So yes, I could still do the techni- technicalities of that, but uh, you know, this, this, this definitely next phase of my life and getting this message out to allow people to remember. So my purpose statement in this is I resurrect heroes out of the complacency of their secret identity so they could start living heroic lives once again. And by expressing, experiencing true love now, in every area of their life, meaning that once you could once you could express and experience true love or appreciation now, despite what's going on in every area of your life, because I was the guy who said, well, once this happens, once I achieve this, once I get this, then I'll be happy or fulfilled, not knowing that you'll never be fulfilled if you can't be fulfilled right now in the present moment. And, and embrace the unknowns. That's another thing. You know, the unknowns are, are where all the magic and beauty, and beauty is. That's where all the relationships and opportunities are. It's all these unknowns that we think we have our life planned, not knowing that we don't submit to the unknowns and enjoy the beautiful um, destiny we were created to have, you know? Well, and, and, you know, you say so many things and my mind's just going 100 miles an hour. And, you know, your message is so important. I don't, I don't want to interrupt. Yet when you look at, as a spirit on a human journey, look at the trials that you had to go through. I mean, that's part of our humanity to find our purpose. And then we think and we feel we're fulfilling one purpose and then we have to evolve to another level 
Yeah. Or as we evolve to another level, because you seek that evolution of being more conscious of our divinity, then our purpose changes. Right. And so, and then you have to go through bigger challenges. And then, you know, when you say that the, the blessing of present time and the joy is being comfortable with uncertainty yet in our humanity, we want certainty, you know, we fear what we don't know. And that's why we bring our past and our present yet. If you're going to create something like what you said, your desire was to create something nobody else has ever done and do it in the way that you were divinely called to do it, to make an impact in the lives of people around the world, we're going to create something that's never been created. And there is absolutely no certainty in that other than I am certain I'm a divine being. I'm certain I'm here to do it. I'm certain I will do it. And I have no freaking idea how right now. <laughs> But I know the right people, the right conditions, the, the right consciousness. And as we continue, you know, I did um, the first interview on You're More Powerful. It was Neil Donald Walsh. And, you know, I'm like, wow, you know, your whole purpose, you're helping millions of people. He goes, no, 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 no. He goes, I have one purpose that I don't know I'll fulfill in this life. And that's mastering myself to understand that I am the principles that God taught me. And he said, and then with that, you can't help but impact millions of people. I'm like, oh, my God, what a shift because we get so focused on what our – Right. It's like you, you, sometimes we have the thing we want to help all these other people, and that's the mission. But it's like it, that's a very outward external thing versus saying, well, when I fix – when not when I fix. When I get to myself to a certain level, I radiate this thing where people want to hear what I want to say. Like especially in social media today, there's a lot of people that they front – and they show like this is a certain life they live. And there's people that people want to hear because they created something, right? They, so a lot of times, I, I, and that's the way I wanted to be. Like when people ask me to speak, it's because it's, it was me living and expressing my life and working on myself that attracted that person to hear what I want to say. Not that, hey, Mike, I'm going to go and do this to sell some books or sell some programs. Uh, but I'm not really, I, you know, I'm kind of almost a... Uh, you know, an avatar, but not really the true thing. You know, I'm a hologram, not really the true thing. So I, I really, that really hits home when he said that it's like, Hey, listen, I'm working on myself. And as I work on myself, I, and these principles I get, it, it's, they're so powerful that I, it, it can't help but to affect, you know, like when Christ was on this, like it's affecting people today, you know, when Buddha affecting the people today, when my, like, like, their, their message just keeps on affecting. But when you look at it, they were just doing their thing, right? You know, they had their message. People had, so it's just amazing that you're so right, uh, you know, because they constantly were introspecting and allowing themselves to, um, you know, be who they were. Or, or like you said, trying to match the principles, the divinity, and the humanity at the same time. Well, and here's the the great part, um, number one, about you and what you do. And, and you're just really reflecting and mirroring that the, the same greatness, obviously, is in all of us, that we're all great in our own way. And your hero, um, not just your story, but everything you created, you had to live it. And that's what's so authentic about it. You had to live it. You had to experience it to learn it. And that's what makes it so powerful. So how do people uh, get in touch with you, get into your programs? Oh, great. So more into that. Um, I have something for you guys. It's uh, There's two things. There's this, the Hero Secret Sauce, which is really fun. It's a PDF and some really, you know, some videos that you could start winning immediately today. And when you look back, you know, I, the reason why I might say I won Mr. America, or I did this, or I built this one practice, or I went back and won Mr. Universe. Or I bid, so, like, there's a lot of different areas, piano, you know, like that I, I achieved a really high, high top level. And, like, well, how? And so I have distilled it down. There's very, there's very specific principles, you know, so I, I share those with you guys. And you get that if you just go to IamHero.com. So it's I-M-A-M-Hero.com. And then you'll see, you could register for my, I have a webinar. It's very well done. It's very nice. It's not like, it doesn't look like WebK. It's very professional. You'll love it. And it goes over, it goes over a lot of the, the hero principles, such as embracing the hero mindset, uh, maximizing your superpowers, you know, finding and choosing your vehicle of, of, of getting your message out to the world. 
and then leaving a legacy. And it really is powerful. It's a, it's a master class that I made for you guys. It's, it's more of a master class. And if you watch that master class, you'll also get the entire um, Hero Secret Sauce uh, uh, bonus for just uh, putting in the time to doing that. So you just go to IamHero.com and uh, you can register right there. Nice. Well, as we wrap this up, uh, you know, it's always such a, such a great honor, man. I mean, we, you and I can talk about this. We can go on and on and on. And actually for people that want to actually see you live, we are going to be here in Newport beach. We have a a seminar, uh, October 25th, 26th. This is all self-empowerment stuff. We're going to be going through parts of the healed system. Dr. Chris is going to present your whole hero philosophy and we're actually going to take the audience through exercises that will literally transform you from the inside out so this isn't anything about inspiration because inspiration comes and goes but but transformation is about expanding your mind that once it expands it can never return and that's what this is going to be about so we'll also have a link attached to this podcast Uh, call and register. You don't, I mean, this is given by my chiropractic group, but it's not a chiropractic seminar. This is a get in touch with your power, your hero, your divinity, clear of your past and find and live your soul purpose to another level. So we get to see you there. And any final thoughts that you'd like to leave the audience with? Uh, It just comes to like, you know, I believe all of you were born with seeds of greatness and you're capable of doing heroic things and it's about remembering the whole thing was about remembering and sometimes you have to go through some situations that that makes you remember and it's you see those situations as not as trials but as the greatest blessings you ever had in your life but you don't have to go but here's the thing you don't have to go through the bullshit (laughs) to figure that out like that's what dr fred like like you know life has brought me to those areas because it knew my stubborn personality so, but you don't have to, like, but that's not a pre I don't like when people say, I got to go to the trial. Like there's no martyring. You don't have to martyr yourself for a gift that you already have. Um, but it's about, so, so it's about, it's yeah. about, I mean, I, I think you should say that again. I don't think yeah. I got that. Yeah. There's the, the, like, there's no reason to martyr yourself for a gift that you already had. That's always yours. But I think we feel as human beings, we need to because of dogmas and belief systems and not in the, and this, this absolute lie of being unworthy, you know? You don't have to suffer. Don't have to suffer. Suffering is a choice. Always was. Cool, man. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate you taking the time. And, uh, you know, share this all over, gang, because obviously as you listen to this, this message will change the lives of millions of people around the world. So, So please share it. Follow us. Uh, go to IamHero.com. You can also go to YouAreMorePowerful.com to get the You're More Powerful Than You Think book. Thank you, my friend. Love you. Love you too, bud. Peace. You are listening to the You Are More Powerful podcast brought to you by YouAreMorePowerful.com and the book, You Are More Powerful Than You Think by Dr. Fred Domenico. Join us again next time for more discoveries right here on the You Are More Powerful podcast. 